Hey peeps, we are back. We are talking love after lockup, life after lockup, season three, episode 54. And this is really hard to believe for me. <laughs> season three, episode 54. I'm asking, how many more episodes is in season three? That seems as if it's a lot. I'm just saying. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. All right, so the show starts out with Nicole, Dante, and Tia. Does anybody else get the feeling or the vibe that Nicole is afraid of Tia? It's really weird to me because on multiple times she brings up that she doesn't want to upset Tia and you know when she gets angry she is um, nervous or worried. She fidgets around her. She cries a lot around her. It's something there that just it doesn't sit well with me at all. I think that they are in a very dangerous toxic relationship and it's only my opinion. I have no proof of any of it, but that's just the vibe that I get from the show. It seems that she just goes with whatever Tia says because she doesn't want to get the wrath of this woman or something. I don't know. But Tia invites Nicole down to this beautiful lakefront uh, restaurant, which was weird because it's not only a restaurant, it looks like it's also a um, has lake homes and boats and everything around. There was some people sitting on a porch in the background. Then there was some fisher guy or boat captain dude down on the lower level. I said, now this is cute. <laughs> I mean, seriously. But she invites her there and Nicole shows up. She's dressed up and Tia's telling her how she feels about the whole threesome situation. She is not okay with it. She doesn't want to share Nicole. And I thought, well, that is definitely a change of events because when Nicole first brought this plan up to her, she was all for it if she thought Nicole was getting money. So I'm starting to think that she realized that Nicole wasn't only about the money when it came to Dante, that Nicole had some feelings for Dante, not enough that she cared about protecting this man's feelings in his heart, but enough that Tia wasn't appreciative of it. But that's just what I was feeling. I want you guys to get down in the comments and let me know, am I reading this 100% wrong? Get down in the comments and let me know what you think. Another thing that I noticed throughout their conversation is they can hardly have a conversation or even eat without holding on to those vapes and just vaping the entire time. And I'm thinking that's an addiction. It seems like it, you know, just like cigarette smoking can be addicting. I think this vaping thing is for them as well. They do it and so does John, you know, John from John and Christiana. It's just a lot with them and this vaping thing. Later on in the episode, when Nicole came to see Deante, she had a pack of cigarettes and two different vaping things, a yellow one and a orange one or a reddish colored one. And I'm thinking, you can't use them all at the same time. Why do you have them? I mean, it's a lot going on. So what is this? So listen, baby, I've been thinking about it. I'm addicted to you. Addicted to you? Like, a, like a cigarette. So will you marry me? Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, you know okay. I will, baby. <laughs> Listen, I think that that was a very beautiful setup with the water and the flowers and then the people on the boat sharing them on. I think that that was really beautiful, but, and the ring was really pretty too. My thing is that I would rather the two of them go into rehab than to get married. Um, they seem extremely toxic. Tia made this comment that she's addicted to Nicole, but in my opinion, it seems that they might be addicted to something else. And I think therapy and rehabilitation is required, you know, for this couple. The only thing that I thought was good about this was that Deante can possibly move on with his life. I am hoping that everything works out wonderfully for Nicole and Tia. Just leave Deante alone. I want this boy to grow up, get some therapy, and move on with his life. 
This guy is working two jobs to try to pay off all these bills that he accumulated when he was trying to be everything to Nicole, buying her all this stuff, knowing that he did not have enough money to do all of that. So he's working a second job and she contacts him and asks him if they could have a conversation. He says that he's been trying to reach her ever since they had that falling out with Tia and she had been ignoring his calls and that's because we know she's engaged to Tia now. So she shows up. What's that on your finger? That's why I came here to talk to you. It's an engagement ring. Me and Tia are engaged and I wanted to come here and tell you that. How much more you want to just stomp on my damn heart? God, you really came to tell me that? I felt like you deserved to know. I was better off not knowing. You know, just stick the knife in me and just turn it as much as you can. Just keep turning till you can't turn no more. Because that's what I feel like with that. Why, why would you tell me that? Why would she tell me that? I mean, a few months ago, Nicole was engaged to me. It just, it don't make sense. I'm sorry. No, you're good, you're good. It is what it is. I really did want it to be us. <laughs> I did too, but... This wasn't at all. I don't think you did, because if you did, it would be. I have to agree with him. I think that she is afraid of Tia. I am truly sorry to see him crying. I don't want Deontay to be hurt. I really don't. But you've got to let this woman go and move on with your life. You keep saying that her and Tia are toxic together, but she's toxic with you too. And they won't stay together. They'll break up. They'll this, she'll come back. You need to not even wait for that. You need to move on with your life. Try to find peace in your heart and move on, Deante. You deserve so much better. You've got to stop this. You're in a vicious cycle of allowing people to use you. And it's hard to feel sorry for you because you keep letting it happen. You have to learn from things and move forward. Sean and Sarah, the Lord have mercy. Sean shows up at Sarah's house. It's finally time for him to meet her mom and her daughter, Abby. He shows up with flowers and a couple of toys for Abby. Um, Sean comes in already worried and on guard because he wants to make sure that he isn't exposed with his lies. As soon as he sits down, Sarah excuses herself and Abby from the room so that he can have a moment to speak with her mom. However, before he gets there, she asks her mom to please, don't be hard on him, please give him a chance. Girl, please, you need a mom like her to pull Sean's card and to get to the bottom of this. Not only do I have to make a good first impression, I have to make sure that I don't get caught for any of the lies that I've been telling Sarah. She still don't know how many kids I have or that I was engaged to Destiny while I was talking to her. Like, I'm hoping that, you know, things work out. We we get married or, like, get I married. I really see it, a future with her. Sarah, There's no way in hell that you had no feeling that you want to marry somebody that you've been talking to for a year and only met up with her twice. Is this something you do on, on the regular? You talk to girls in prison? No, I don't do this. Vulnerable girls? for you to put your little claws in? No. I mean, is that what you do? It's not. I don't believe this guy for one second. He has a look about him like I just don't trust it. He looks sneaky and conniving like he's up to no good all the time. I think you need to take a step back on the marriage thing. Listen, I am team mom, okay? She knows he's lying. He is absolutely sitting there in this woman's face claiming all of this love and affection for her daughter and how he only wants the best for her, lying. She knows that Sean is full of crap. She says she thinks it's her mother's instinct. I don't know if it's your mother's instinct or just plain old common sense. It's right there in your face. He's a liar, okay? The man has six children. He had a straight up girlfriend slash fiance behind your daughter's back. He's older than he said he was. He's a liar. And I appreciate when she told him that she has been gone all this time and has not been a mother to her daughter. It's time for her to get back to her real life and to be a mother to her daughter. And she really doesn't need to be dating right now and having Sean interfere in her life. 
She needs to focus on being a parent. And I agree 1000%. She really does not need to be dating. What she needs to be doing is seeking a job, maybe some additional schooling and being a mom, being a mom first. You left and went to jail when this girl was only a couple months old. She's six years old now. You need to focus on being her mother and providing for her, not being Sean's girlfriend. No, ma'am, I'm team mom. And then he goes to say that he's not going to be a distraction. And I don't believe it. You are a complete distraction right now. As soon as Sarah comes back in the room, Sean excuses himself. He, he needs to leave. He forgot all this stuff that he needed to do. Then when she walks him outside, the first thing he says is, why don't we spend the weekend together? Okay, so that's the weekend with you that she could have been with her daughter and she's only been out of jail for a month or two. Uh, I think it's a little bit of distraction. She agrees that she's going to spend the weekend with him. However, she goes back into the house and she tells her mom that she thought that she was too hard on him. Give him a chance. She really has feelings for him. And that's how she said it for him. And um, she wants to give it a chance. But then she makes this comment. She thinks that he would be good for her daughter. And her mom said, uh-uh, uh-uh. And I am paraphrasing. She says, no, no, no. You are not going to put him in as the father to her, as a daddy to this little girl. And she says, well, I'm not, you know, looking for a dad to replace uh, her dad. What I'm saying is I think that he would be good for her. Well, maybe you should find out by asking his other six kids. Um, is he a good daddy to you? I mean, at girl, you have got to find out who this man is before you are planning to let him be in your daughter's life. They showed a preview for next week and it seems that she does spend the weekend with him and they have the sex and everything and she finds out some of the truth or part of the truth. The whole thing is really odd, especially considering in current day, allegedly she's married to him and pregnant. It's like, what? Man, that will make a total of eight children, seven of his children and her daughter. Really, Sean? I'm serious. I am so over Sean and Sarah. John and Christiana, and everybody knows. I love Christiana, John not so much. Anyway, Christiana is upset. She's still reeling from Tara not being there for her big special day. And I'm still upset that John didn't tell her that he asked Tara not to come when you know how important this is to her. And another thing that irritated me a little bit about this is that Tammy, at the beginning, she was amping up the situation. Oh, Tara is not here. I'm so sick of this. And I'm thinking to myself, this is Christiana's day. She's wearing her gown that she loves, even though I don't appreciate the pink bra and the black underpants under that wedding dress. She's looking beautiful and she's happy. As a mom, Tammy, you are supposed to be calming her down, evening things out, and just sharing love with your daughter right now. Don't be a part of the problem, okay? So Christiana storms out. She needs a moment. She needs a smoke break. And then finally, Tammy comes to her senses, comes out, gives her all the love and support and says, listen, it's okay. Today is your day. We will look for Tara tomorrow. And I said, finally, Tammy, yes, step up and do the mom thing and let this Tara situation go for a moment and just support Christiana and smile and hug her and love her and let her have her special moment. You may kiss the bride. Oh, I like this part. Woo! <laughs> Barney and Clyde. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Oh, you look great. Right Thank you. So do you. I Thanks. like your dress. Thanks. I know it's been a rocky year, but I hope we can move positively forward. I would like that, you know? I just, I would like for us to both have respect, you know? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Better take care of my mother. I will. I promise you All right. that. All right. Thank you. She's special. She is. I just want my mom to be happy. Now, honey, listen, I, they are, you know, they will not let that Bonnie and Clyde go. Please let it go, okay? I was really happy to see that Sarah offered an olive branch. However, you've got to remember, not a good hour ahead of time, she was tearing Christiana down. Sarah, listen, you guys have got to start all over, refreshed. I hope that she really meant that. I hope that they can respect each other and learn to love each other. If not as stepmother and daughter, just as people who love the same guy. She loves her dad. 
Christiana loves her dad. Just try to be respectful. Christiana's son being there, he was crying through the wedding and he just wants his mom to be happy. He's so happy for her and he wants her to be happy, safe, and sober. Those is, that's the only thing that he wants. Happy, safe, sober mom. And I am wishing the very best for Christiana and John and their entire family, including Tara. I hope that she is somewhere clean and sober and happy. Puppy and Amber. Oh gosh. Is anybody else over Puppy and Amber? If you're over Puppy and Amber, put a number one in the comments. I have had it. These two, please love after lockup people. Don't bring them back again. I'm tired. So Puppy shows up to Amber's house and she's got a suitcase. And I said, oh Lord, you're not moving in here, are you? But we quickly find out that she brought over some clothes and shoes because they're going to go out. So they're going to get dressed. But before they get dressed, they're going to drink some drinks out of coffee cups. It was something with a little crown roll in it. I don't know. Anyway... Puppy lets Amber know that there's a warrant out for her arrest. And I said, oh no. Turns out that the jig is up. Her probation officer or parole officer, I think she has a parole officer, shows up over to her house and the next door neighbor let the cat out the bag. She told the parole officer, oh, she doesn't live here. <laughs> oh my God. Sometimes nosy neighbors are a good thing. Other times, times like this, no ma'am, not a good thing. Anyway, the probation officer has issued a warrant for her arrest. And instead of her reaching out to her probation officer or any law enforcement agency and trying to settle this, she's just hiding from it. I said, well, you know good and daggone well that you are paroled to your mama's house. You are not supposed to live at Eric's house. You are not supposed to live at Eric's house. And Eric told us that he's a former convict. So you can't be at Eric's house, period. Now, if you wanted to spend the night at Eric's house from time to time, I'm sure you could figure out a way to make that happen. However, she's trying to say, well, that is my address. Well, sure, it's your address on paper, but that's not where you lay your head every night. You need to handle this before you go back to jail. But anyway, they go to this club. They are drunk already before they even get there. And it's them and three other people. And... Amber is completely wasted and we all know what happens when she's completely wasted. All of a sudden she turns out to be in love with Puppy. So she's all over Puppy and I am nervous for her because we've all seen Eric and that man has a temper. I don't trust him. So I'm thinking, oh my goodness, you cannot be all over this woman like this. She's going to have a problem and I'm worried about Puppy. Just got to <clears throat> get her on to the new thing. That can't be me. <laughs> I'm unavailable right now, and um, I don't know what to do. I let her get the best of me. She did that before, and I'm not going back there. Can't do that again. She's trying to f with my head, I think, a little bit. I love you. I'm I sorry. Ah, somebody get her. <laughs> well, it turns out that Puppy is worried about Puppy, too. Puppy says that she knows that she's only doing this because she is drunk. She is not about to get caught up in this stuff again. And she has a relationship that she has to worry about. And I was grateful for that because I think that Amber loves Puppy, but I don't think she loves her in that way. And you have already broken this woman's heart once. Don't pull this woman back down. And throughout the whole night, while Amber was all over Puppy, she was doing her best to dodge and weave and, you know, try to make sure that she wasn't enjoying it too much because she she knows that I think Eric is unstable, in my opinion. So one thing that Amber did say is that when it came to Sammy, she mentioned that Sammy, when he was going through his drug court, he was clean and sober and he was the Sammy that she fell in love with. But then after the drug court, he changed. And I said, is that her way of telling us that we were right in thinking that that man was on something and not quite sober? And I believe that is the case. Um, I hope Sammy is gone for good. And I also want Amber to slow down on your drinking because when you drink like that, that's just sloppy and messy. And she was really trying to hit on puppy, which is not cool. I'm just saying. Anyway, I'm tired of the both of them. And puppy, go handle your warrant. I don't want to see you back in jail, young lady. Lisa and Stan. So honey, listen. Lisa's friend picks her up. Stan is up in the window wondering who is this anyway the pink haired woman shows up 
we find out that this girl, I think her name is Renata or Renata, I don't know. She shows up and then we find out that she's an ex-girlfriend of Lisa's brother. I said, oh, way to keep it in the family. You trying to have intimacy with this woman who was with your brother. That's, that's not cute. There's so many people in the world. You have to pick somebody who dated your brother. I'm just saying. Anyway, she fills her in on the fake profile and how she's been sort of catfishing Stan. And she says that um, she's surprised that Lisa would even date somebody like Stan because Stan is not the normal type that she usually dates. She thinks that Stan is a jerk and a creep. And I said, well, yes, he is that. However, what's different about Stan and the other guys that she used to date is, what was it, $1.5 million? Um, that he's allowing her to stay in his house and that he has purchased her a car and he gives her money almost every time she walks out the door. That's the difference. This is all a fake account. will blow your mind. I say, what are you looking for? And he says, a relationship with a bisexual gal for threesomes. Oh my God. I said, would you be open to being with a man I would, I would like to watch? He said, if it's a fantasy of yours, I would probably do a guy. <gasps> No, he didn't. Now, honey, listen, uh, Stan is a super freak. We all knew it. We all knew Stan was a super freak, especially when she explained to us about the straight jacket and the prostate, which I really didn't understand that at first. I had to Google. But I'm not even going to share with you guys what that meant when she said that about Stan and his prostate because I don't know if YouTube allows it. But anyway, Stan is doing too much. And I just, you know, that's just my opinion. Is his hair real? <laughs> and he's bald right here, so it's just one, <laughs> one thing. Yeah, what? yeah. Stan the man. He could probably be like a magnet chick if I could just cut the flag off. Just be bald, you know. Spit shine that. So he dyes all of his hair and leaves this gray. Why? He thinks it looks good. <laughs> I said, why do you do that? He said, my girlfriend Teresa said it looked great. I said, well, she lied. I think I look good. Now listen, that was funny to me, but ma'am, ma'am, your extensions, you are looking more and more Lion King every episode. Your extensions is just as bad as Stan's to pay. Um, even if I do agree with you that her, his ex-girlfriend was wrong about the gray pods, you know, and Stan's hair is three different shades. You and Stan both are not doing the best in the hair department. And I'm saying this knowing full well that I don't do the best in the hair department either. Uh, why am I talking about their hair when I don't do well in the hair department? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to move on. I'm moving on. So her and her friend slash wannabe girlfriend go back to the hotel and she tells her friend here are these wigs that stan brought me listen you would have did better off by brushing and curling and flat ironing those wigs than what you've got going on with these extensions i'm just saying you could have took the wigs back to the shop where he bought them and the woman could have cut them and styled them any kind of way it's better than what you're currently doing right now but anyway she tells her friend that she would like her to wear one of the wigs and they're gonna set Stan up so there's a sting operation going down next episode and I'm here for it okay I'm ready for Stan to be busted anyway you guys this episode was pretty good I mean I hate to see Deante sad but I'm glad the relationship is over I hope it's over and I'm looking forward to see what happens to Stan. And then we saw in the previews that Brittany shows up at Ray's cousin's house and kind of demands that Ray leave with her. And it's, it looks like she might have busted up and walked into the man's house. I don't even know. But I tell you what, I'm not busted up walking into anybody's home. I mean, these days, people will shoot you. You know, you can't just bust up into people's house. I know. I would just stay home and wait for Ray to get there. And then I would, you know, have a conversation. It's too much. Anyway, you guys, get down in the comments and let me know what you thought of this episode. And what do you think about the previews for next week? And until next time, bye.